Houston. We'll talk about that and more up next. First take, Friday. You know what time it is. Let's go. When that clock starts, turn the savages. We have the best backfield in the league. There's no question. Is this run game going? Those two guys are extremely special. The hurdles. He's into the end zone. Touchdown. Shabba Lava Hop. Baker Mayfield. Feel free to score a touchdown. To make these moments count. These are the things that we've been trying to build up to, and we're here now. Um, hello everybody, Stephen A. It's not just Friday, it's a feel good Friday, y'all. How are we doing this morning? Good to see you both. We have plenty to talk about. Morning, Max, Stephen A., I'm Molly. Good morning, guys. Uh, let's get right to it because we got a lot of football and we have a lot of NBA as well. I want to start with the Cleveland Browns, as Stephen A. just mentioned. So they're now eight and three. Um, they're second in the division behind the Steelers, currently the five seed in the AFC playoff picture. They've won their last. Last three, Stephen A. Sunday they face Tennessee. So tell me this. I will start with you. Do you finally believe in Baker and the Browns? Well, I believe in the Browns. I'm not sure I believe in Baker Mayfield. I think Bart Scott earlier this morning on Get Up said it best. There's no quarterback who's done less with more than Baker Mayfield. The jury's still out about him. We know that they're eight and three, but we also know that this guy's only completing 21, uh, 61% of his passes. He's only thrown for 2,100 yards over the first uh, 10 or 11 games or so. And so when I look at it from that perspective, 17 touchdowns, seven interceptions is nothing to, to, to sneeze at per se. Nothing that, that blows you away, but he's not throwing an abundance of interceptions. We'll give him credit for that. But look at what he has. He's got Nick Chubb and Kareem Hunt at the running back spot. Even with Odell Beckham Jr. going, you still got Jarvis Landry in the crew and Hooper and those boys. So you've got a multitude of weapons. Kevin Stefanski deserves a lot of credit uh, because of how he's he's basically kept, kept Baker Mayfield contained, per se, and utilized the other assets around him and just, and just basically have asked Baker Mayfield not to lose the damn game. And to his credit, he has it. But let's remind everybody, that outside, when they lost their last game, it was against the Las Vegas Raiders, a game in which they only put up six points the entire game. Since that time, they've beaten the Houston Texans. We know what struggles they have had, even though Deshaun Watson has been lights out. And then after that, they played the Eagles. And they played the Jacksonville Jaguars. So let's pump the brakes and not act like, oh, my Lord, they're eight and three. It's something special going on in Cleveland. The quality of competition that you have taken that you have taken out does have something to do with that as well. And so I look at Cleveland. Do I believe in Baker? No. Do I believe in the Browns? Yeah, that's where I'm at with it right now. But only a little bit. They'll make the playoffs. I don't expect them to make any noise, to be very clear. Well, I, I, I don't know what you're arguing. Are you arguing that you don't believe in them? Because you made the argument at the end there. The, the Jaguars by two points under a field goal. Okay. The Eagles by five points under a touchdown. And the Texans, who were well, two and seven fair. at the time, by a field goal. That's how they started winning games. I do not believe in the Browns, and it's because I don't believe in Baker Mayfield. And it took me a while to get there with Baker. I held out hope for Baker. But he doesn't do anything special. He can throw the ball well enough. He can read a defense well enough. He can move well enough. But nothing really stands out. And so he can be a good enough quarterback. But a good enough quarterback to win a Super Bowl? No, I don't think so. He needs a whole lot around him. I don't think he's good enough to win the whole thing. And in fact, the two divisional games he played, they got destroyed. They got destroyed by Baltimore week one. They got destroyed by Pittsburgh when it looked like maybe they could be coming on. No, I don't believe in the Browns. For the reasons you pointed out, I don't believe in the Browns. And, and, and it's because, like, maybe if you replace Baker with a better quarterback, I, maybe I would think, yeah, actually, they do have the, a couple of good backs. You know, and it, it, with, with Odell, here's an example of it's not a matter of addition by subtraction. It's a matter of separating two players. Baker Mayfield is better off without Odell because they have zero chemistry. And I know Odell is way better off without Baker. So, like, you saw the team kind of come together when there wasn't an issue, the, a, no, a zero chemistry issue between the quarterback and the wideout. But you're right. Landry is left. He can, he can, he's a really good receiver. And they got a couple of excellent running backs. And they got a good enough defense with some big-time playmakers. If it weren't for Baker, maybe I would believe in them but Baker's on the team he's only okay and so I don't well I would say this the reason I'll say I do is because again to win in the playoffs you got to have a defense and you got to have a running game 
And when you look at the Browns defense, particularly their ability to get to the quarterback, especially with Miles Garrett in there, obviously that's formidable. And then when you combine that with Chubb and Kareem Hunt, especially since Chubb has been back, you've seen what he's been able to do. I'm just of the mindset that when you look at them right now, you simply can't ignore what this guy is going to bring to the table. Their last three games, their three-game winning streak, he's rushed for 126 yards, 114 yards, and then last week against Jacksonville, 144 yards averaging at least 5.7 yards in each game, a carry in each game. Nick Chubb is that dude. This brother is something special. And so when you look at him from coming out of the backfield, you can take that kind of game into on, on the road or even at home or, you know, off, or off Lake Erie in inclement weather. If you can run the football and you can defend, you can do some things, particularly to get to the postseason and be a potent threat to somebody else. So in that regard, I say, yes, again, I don't believe in Baker Mayfield either, but I do believe that that defense could get to the quarterback. And I do believe that running game will go wherever the team goes. They can be at home. They can travel on the road. The running game will be there for them. The combination of the two makes me say to them, excuse me, I believe that this team could get to the playoffs and obviously they can make a little bit of noise potentially. I just don't believe in Baker Mayfield. That's why I don't view them as Super Bowl yeah. quality somehow, some way. I think that he'll ultimately Browns, mess it up because an opposing defense will say, let's make Baker Mayfield beat us. The Browns have benefited from a very, very, very soft schedule. And in fact, even some teams that started playing better later on in the season weren't playing well when the Browns faced them. You know, uh, uh, the Texans, for example, uh, mm -hmm. or earlier in the season, Washington, who's played better recently. So these are bad teams that the Browns faced when those teams were bad. But you even look at like the Bengals earlier in the season. They, they, they win, it was a one score game against Cincinnati. They're just, they, they don't win by very much when they do. And when they do win, it's almost always against a bad team. The Colts early on is probably their best win of the season. Another team that's played better as the season wore on. Look what's coming up now for them. The Titans this week, then the Ravens. You ostensibly, I mean, you would think the Ravens would be healthy and have their quarterback and players back by then. The Giants, who have also played better as the season's gone on. Then they have a gimme against the Jets and then the Steelers. So it's not exactly a murderer's row coming up because the mm -hmm. Browns' whole seasonal schedule, whole season schedule was soft. But it is a tougher part of their schedule. I expect them to lose at least two of those games, and I well, don't expect them to get a win in the playoffs. Max, I will tell you this. I think that you're being a little bit hard on Cleveland when it comes to the softness of their schedule because you got to remember the schedule is set before the season is played, obviously. So who do they have? They've got the Pittsburgh Steelers twice. They've got the Baltimore. Ravens twice. They're going up against the NFC South. The Tennessee Titans were in the AFC title game. The Indianapolis Colts were